tutti! My name is Giulia and welcome to my masterclass on photography. I'm an Italian food photographer and food stylist living in London. If you're wondering how I got a gig like this, well, it all started with my dad. Ciao dad! When I was a bambina, my dad would take me around Rome with nothing but a film camera and plenty of gelato and pizza to keep us going. We take pictures of everything, the Trevi Fountain, the Colosseum, the beautiful churches and all the buzzing tourists around. And then we'd go home and develop our photos in the darkroom of our bathroom. Yes, I'm that old. And then basically I've never stopped taking photos ever since. I started professionally as a wedding photographer in Rome, but it wasn't until I moved to London that I discovered the most romantic thing for me to photograph was, well, food. My love for food is almost as great as my love for photography. So combining the two was a no brainer really. And now I've been a professional food stylist and photographer for five years. And I worked with clients such as National Geographic, Tesco, and some of the best chefs in the world. I think it's fair to say that I've been lucky and this is the most definitely a dream job for me. Along the way, I've picked up some tricks which I'm more than happy to share with you to hopefully inspire you and elevate your photography game and take amazing photos of your food. Now, in this masterclass, I'm going to be covering camera settings, lighting, composition, to name a few. So, let's start at the beginning. What's in my camera bag? Let's have a look. This is a Manfrotto backpack. Manfrotto is one of my favorite brands. Um, they're Italian and they do really high quality and really durable photography equipment. They do all sorts of things. I love this bag. It just feels like part of your body. You don't feel it when it's on your back and it's got dividers and it's nice and padded so that your camera gear, it's nice and safe and snug. And it's waterproof, of course, because sometimes you need to withstand the weather and we're in London, so hey, <laughs> you never know. Um, but enough for the bag, get the best bag you can afford. But what's inside, it's really interesting. Now, a camera, of course, haha. <laughs> I use Nikon. Nikon is my preferred camera system. Um, I've tried Canon and I've tried Fuji as well, but Nikon just feels right in my hands. And this is something really important when you choose your first camera brand. Um, technology nowadays is so advanced that whatever system you choose, you will get high quality photos. Now, my personal preference is Nikon because the buttons are all in the right position for my hand. Um, the wheels and the little turn things are exactly where I want them to be. Also, their body feels really nice in my small hands. Canon, for example, has a smaller body and it, that doesn't feel as nice for me. So it's really important that you go to a shop and you try different cameras in your hands and you feel them. You have to feel your camera because you're going to be handling this every single day. Or, well, I hope you will because I hope you'll enjoy what I'm, what I'm about to teach you. Um, I use this camera every day, so it's really important that it feels right for me. Uh, this is a professional full frame camera. Now, this is a bit of a photography jargon, but what it means is that the sensor inside is quite it's quite big. It's as big as the old film strip that we used to have on our vintage cameras. Um, and that means that this camera can give you a very high resolution and you can basically pre print photos that are as big as a building almost, <laughs> roughly. Now, not everyone needs this. I mean, you wouldn't get a Ferrari just to go if you just needed to go for your grocery shopping. Um, but I, my recommendation is that you always get the best camera, the best body that you can afford for the budget that you have and the skill level that you have. That's also really important. This camera is quite complicated to use. It's quite an advanced camera. So if you're just a beginner, I recommend you getting something into the entry level category because that will be plenty for you to learn and not, not, but not enough for you to get confused, if that makes sense. So get the best you can afford for your skill level. Um, on to lenses. What do we put on top of our camera? This little guy 
is my go-to lens. It's my favorite lens of all time. I've been using it since I was using film. So this lens is actually quite old, though. I think it was made in 1970s something. Um, this is a 50 millimeters, 1.8, Nikon, one of the best lenses that Nikon ever made. Um, I love this lens because basically it gives you the same angle that, your, that the human eye has, which means it's not too zoomed in, you don't go too close in your subject, or you, and vice versa, you don't take a too wide of an angle, which means it's a very, very versatile lens that you can use for many subjects. You can use indoors, you can use outdoors, in a restaurant, in a kitchen, and it's really small, really light, really inexpensive as well. This, believe it or not, is a very inexpensive lens. Um, so if you break it, it's fine. <laughs> Buy another one. Um, they've made it like this for years and uh, this is my go-to lens for, for these reasons. And it's also a very bright lens um, with the maximum aperture of 1.8. It means the, the aperture diaphragm inside can open really wide and which in turn mean that a lot of light ca can come into the lens. Uh, which makes it very useful for low light conditions. But I will explain all of this as we move along the masterclass. Don't worry, now it's all a bit overwhelming and confusing, but I will get into the details. Um, a lot of photographers use um, what are called tele lenses or macro lenses. Um, that is not my preferred choice because you have to be really far from the subject using a 100 millimeters macro and sometimes there's just not the space in your kitchen or in a restaurant to do that. So it's a lot less versatile, that lens. Uh, another one of my favorite lenses though is the 85 millimeters Nikon and 1.8, meaning maximum aperture 1.8. So it's as bright as this 50 millimeters. Uh, however, this one, can get really, really close. It's almost like a macro lens, uh, meaning you can get really zoomed in photos of your subject. And uh, this one gives you a really nice and soft uh, blurred background. And again, I will explain to you how to get this in the next episodes. But these are the two lenses that I use the most. Um, the important thing is that, again, you get the best lens that you can afford. And also, please do get prime lenses. Prime lenses are lenses that don't have a zoom. They have a fixed focal lens. The number over here, it's called the focal lens. So 50 millimeters, 100 millimeters, 85, 35, these are focal lenses. Um, with the 50 millimeters is the mid-range mid focal lens, 85 is a tele lens, 35 is what's called the wide-angle lens, uh, but basically get yourself a prime lens. These are the best for food, they're the best in general, they will give you the best quality possible. Zooms give you a lot of versatility, but generally they're lacking a bit in quality unless you spend huge amounts of money, which Maybe not yet. As you, as you progress in your skills, you might. Okay, so now we have our body. We have our lens of choice. What do we put inside the body? Well, clearly a memory card, obviously, um, to be able to capture um, all your images. They come in different sizes, different speeds. Again, get the best you can afford because these things will last you for years. Um, in terms of memory cards, I have some that are 32 gigabytes, some that are 64, and some that are 128. Now that really depends on the amount of images that you're planning to take, but generally I'd recommend starting with a 32 or 64 gigabyte me memory card that will give you plenty, plenty, plenty of space. Um, another important thing is that get yourself a fast memory card, meaning a memory card that can record and transmit data quite quickly because these cameras nowadays, they can take really fast speed 
shots so that the shutter speed can be really fast. So you can take six, seven, eight, nine images per second. Except this is only true if you have the fast memory card. So if you are planning to take action so shots like chefs pouring uh, like maple syrup on pancakes or like icing sugar flying around, then you'll need, you, you'll want to have a fast memory card. And now we put Ariel back in the bag. What else is in my camera bag? So bits and bobs. We've got some clamps. These are always useful to hold things in place on set, like reflectors and diffusers, which I'll, I will show you in a second. Blue tack. Blue tack is your best friend. You have to marry your blue tack because with this little guy, you can stick just about anything anywhere. So it'll hold like even little bits in your set, like cutlery or glasses or napkins, they, it will hold it into position. If you can put it even in food, Shh. but don't say that. Uh, <laughs> that's not health and safety wise, not right. Then we have one of these. You can buy these. They're very inexpensive. You can find them on Amazon. Um, these are your best friends for all lighting conditions. Basically, this is a five in one diffuser, reflector and blocker. I will get into details of what these things mean. But in the meantime, I'm just going to show you. Basically, inside we have a diffuser. This means that light passes through here and it just diffuses. It becomes, the light source becomes bigger, the shadows become less harsh. I will explain everything in detail. So we have a diffuser and then we have on one side a silver reflector which will reflect a light with a coldish cold hue. Then we have a black which will block any light bouncing from the subject or onto the subject. We have a gold, which is the same as the silver. It just casts a warm, a warmer light and you can use it to reflect your shadow or, or give a bit of warm, warmth to your subject. Or white, which means you, you will just bounce light, reflect light onto your subject without adding any cast or color. It'll just be neutral. Um, so again, these you can find really inexpensively on Amazon. I think this was about 10 quid. There are different brands and different sizes as well, depending on how much space you've got and which studio you're working with. Um, if you don't want to get yourself one of these just yet, that's absolutely fine. There are household items that you can use in place of this, like bed sheets can be a nice diffuser, um, or like just foam boards to bounce light. The last thing that is fundamental is a tripod. I love this baby. Again, it's a Manfrotto tripod. I will marry this tripod. It's the best. Um, tripod is really, really important. It'll be the difference between a good photo and a bad photo. And I will explain to you why in the next few episodes. Um, but get yourself a good sturdy and heavy tripod. Basically, that's it. This is the first step. We've, we've looked at what we put in our camera bag. Now you have your kit, you have your bag, you're all ready. So now let's get going. Mm -hmm.